Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to go through a straightforward quotient rule question. Now we're going to start by applying one of my favorite tips that I call divide and conquer. I go through that in a video linked down below in the description, so check that out. All right, let's look at our function here, and it's written as a fraction or quotient, so we're going to apply the quotient rule. We'll identify the numerator as f and the denominator as g. All right, let's go ahead and write that down. We'll say f of x is square root of x and g of x, the denominator, 2 plus square root of x. Now to calculate the derivatives f prime and g prime, you might rewrite square root of x as x to the 1 half power. That way you can apply the power rule to calculate the derivative. So let's do that. And we'll rewrite g as 2 plus x to the 1 half. All right, we're going to calculate the derivatives f prime and g prime using the power rule now. So go ahead and start by bringing your power 1 half down. And then subtract 1 from the exponent. 1 half minus 1, that comes out to negative 1 half. And when we calculate g prime, that's pretty much the same thing. The only difference is we have that first term, 2, which is being added to the square root of x term. And 2 is a constant. The derivative of any constant is 0. So we get for g prime, 0. And then the same calculation from the power rule. Bring your power 1 half down times x to the negative 1 half. And you can rewrite that, of course. You have 0 plus something, and you can just rewrite that as 1 half times x to the negative 1 half power. All right, and that's most of the calculations for this question with the quotient rule. Now, the rest of the work is taking all those pieces, f, g, and their derivatives, and then plugging them back into the formula for the quotient rule. And that's where I find a lot of students encounter some difficulties. And it's usually because you have x to the negative 1 half, x to the 1 half in different combinations. And it's a little bit hard for some students when plugging that all in here to see how those simplify. You're multiplying the same base, x, so you can go ahead and add their exponents. But that can be a little tricky and lead to some difficulties because you're working with fractions. If you multiply there, add the exponents, negative a half and positive one half, you'll get x to the zero, which cancels to one. Now, to avoid this calculation with adding the exponents and negative one half and positive one half powers, what I find a lot of students have a simpler time with is if we rewrite these x to the negative one half terms, in other words, take all your x to the one half powers and rewrite them back as square root of x in radical notation. Now let's go ahead and do that here. We'll rewrite f prime as 1 over 2 times square root of x. Same thing for g prime, 1 over 2 square root of x. And now, if we take these fractions for f prime and g prime, multiply them back to combinations of f and g, it'll be a little bit more obvious that the square root of x in the denominator will cancel with the square root of x in the numerator. So let's go ahead and use the pieces here, f of x as square root of x, g as 2 plus square root of x, and then f prime and g prime in the versions that we just rewrote here. So f prime and g prime are the same, 1 over 2 times square root of x. And that'll avoid any difficulties with having to add the exponents and mess up any basic sign errors there. All right, so let's take these pieces and now combine them with the quotient rule. So we're going to calculate y prime, put all the pieces together. And we'll take our time with that. The first term is we have f prime, which is 1, 
over two times square root of X. And that's multiplying G, be careful to use parentheses. So I'll write that as a set of parentheses with two plus square root of X inside. The quotient rule, we get a minus. And the next part is now F square root of X times G prime, which is one divided by two square root of X. And then in your denominator, you have G two plus square root of X squared. And here you can probably see the benefits of rewriting F prime and G prime back as fractions because those square root of X terms will cancel out. All right, now we can simplify the numerator a little bit. Those square root of X terms cancel out. Be careful here. You have two plus square root of X in the numerator and in the denominator, but two plus square root of X is not a factor in the numerator here. That minus sign is preventing that. So we cannot cancel a factor of two plus square root of X out, but what we can do is distribute this fraction into the parentheses. All right, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so just take your time with that. And notice here when we multiply, you have one divided by two square root of X multiplying two. You can cancel out the factors of two and you'll get one over just square root of X. Go ahead and distribute here. Now it's the square root of X's that cancel out leaving you with plus one half. All right, and your minus sign there, everything that comes after, now it's the square root of X terms that cancel and you're left with minus one half. And those one halves will cancel. We still have our denominator here as two plus square root of X. And we have that now squared in the denominator still. And here just simplify. And what you're left with is a fraction in the numerator, one over square root of X. Your denominator is two plus square root of X squared. And you can leave it like that, but it might look a little bit better if we bring this numerator here, that fraction down into the denominator. So we'll just rewrite this as one over square root of X times the quantity two plus square root of X squared. And we get our derivative. Here, it was a straightforward quotient rule question, but the simplification here after calculating your derivatives, that is where some students might get stuck and encounter some difficulties. So here, what we did to avoid some of those difficulties with negative one half and one half powers, we rewrote those derivatives back as fractions and that allowed us to cancel out factors with a factor in the numerator and denominator. So just be aware of that. Sometimes just slight differences in notation will make all the difference. Hope you enjoyed the problem. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.